it. This is Scott from Optics Realm. It's uh, May 2012. This is the sixth ZMAX tutorial. I'm going to show you how to focus a lens. When I say focus, I'm going to put focus in quotations because there's many definitions of focus. Praxial focus, best spot size, best wave front. We're going to use this as a venue to explore the merit function editor and show you how to optimize. Now, those are really advanced features for doing lens design, but we're going to show you how to use that to focus. First focus technique I'd like to talk about is the marginal ray solve. So as I show here, there is a paraxial lens and its thickness to the image plane is 20 millimeters. So if you double click here or you click on the 20 and hit enter, you get this box here with a pull down. And there's a bunch of solves and a bunch of parameters on it. You could be like normally it's fixed, you can make it a variable. What we're going to do is do a marginal ray height. So you just click click marginal ray height. Or you open this dialog box, hit M and hit enter. There's a couple inputs. Height is the height on the next surface for that particular ray. And the pupil zone is the height of this ray at the in the pupil. What is this doing? Well, here's a Cook triplet. And your marginal ray, strictly speaking, your marginal ray goes through the edge of your stop, which in this Cook triplet case is here. But this ray, this marginal ray, if you insert a solve on this last surface here, and you say a height of zero and a pupil zone of one, it's going to take this, this ray at the edge of the pupil. It's going to solve this thickness here to get this to be zero. There are other simple tools to do a quick focus or to do a focus adjustment within ZMAX. They're both located under tools, miscellaneous. The first one is the quick focus or control shift Q. I like using high keys. And you can adjust spot size, wavefront, uh, spot size in X, spot size in Y. It's defaults relative to the chief ray. You can also use the centroid. The quick focus is just the, the last surface. It's adjusting that thickness. The quick adjust, on the other hand, there's no hot key, allows you to adjust different surfaces and different parameters to get different criteria at different surfaces. So you can get the spot size at three surfaces from the image plane. In addition, there's the slider. And that's also under tools, miscellaneous, slider. And what that's going to do is pull up this slider bar here. And you can select, say, thickness or radius on a specific surface. So in this case, we're going to do surface 7 on this two doublet, uh, double tail centric. The thickness starting out is 21.9 millimeters. And we're going to walk it through from 19 to 23. This is sort of a manual iteration. Right now, it's going to update. When you, when you use this slider bar, it's going to update all the windows. So as you click through different thicknesses, it'll update, the in this case, the lens layout and the spot diagram. Now what I'd like to do is, is go through optimization. Optimization is a more powerful technique for focusing. And really, it's a, it's a little overkill for doing focusing. It's intended to do full lens design. But we're going to show you how you do how you let ZMAX optimize an optical system, and we're going to start with just a just focus. We're going to include kind of a simple um, example here, and you have to use you have to build a merit function, and merit function is kind of a misnomer. It really should be called an error function because an error, the higher the number, the more error you have. So ZMAX is going to attempt to drive the merit function to zero. So how do you get to the merit function? You go editors, merit function, or hit F6. I love hotkeys. And it's going to pull up this merit function editor right here. And there's it's just a spreadsheet. Uh, different rows are different constraints. And in the different columns, you've got different parameters you can enter. So you can manually enter a bunch of constraints here. But Z ZMAX gives you a tool to input a default merit function. And in the merit function box, you can go tools, default merit function, and it's going to pull up this box right here. And this box allows you to change the sampling and the type of performance metrics you like. So for instance, as it's shown here, you've got root mean square spot radius relative to the centroid. You can also do peak to valley. You could also do wavefront error here, and you could do it relative to your chief ray.
And then the, under the pupil integration method, there are two types here. Now, the rectangular array is easier to understand. It's just a rectangular grid of rays, and it allows you to delete vignetted. And you could do different samplings in this pull-down here. Or there's Gaussian quadrature, and I have a chart later we'll discuss this. This allows you to trace the minimum number of rays at the most sampling. There's thickness boundary constraints on glass and air, min, max, and edge. I tend not to use this automatically. I, I write my own. Then this last section here is axial symmetry, lateral color, different configurations, and where you start at. This is very important. This, If you're not careful, doing a default merit function will overwrite your pre-existing constraints, and I'll show you how to overcome those. And on top of that, there's an overall weight, and this weight is very important. You're balancing the weight of the merit function relative to your other constraints. So the, the default merit function allows you two sampling types. The first is a rectangular array. So it's a rectangular array, and if you have a circular pupil, it's going to truncate to give you equal um, area sampling in the pupil. And you use this towards the end of the design, or if you have vignetting, it's, it's, it's a more robust sampling method. The other one is the Gaussian quadrature, and here's 11 rings by 8 spokes. And what you can see is there's a higher ray density out at the edge of the pupil where your aberrations tend to go crazier. So you're sampling more where your aberrations go, have difficulties. This is awesome for speed and wanting to move quick if you have a lot of optical surfaces, wavelengths, con uh, um, co configurations. So here's a quick, and I'm not, you know, so I said we're going to use it for focus. I'm going to show you how you would optimize a singlet, and I'm doing that to show you how to control ZMAX uh, and the different uh, adjustments in it. So here we have a Plano convex lens. This lens is flipped for minimum spherical, so this has poor spherical. Purposely, I have poor spherical here. Normally you want your curve towards your infinite con conjugate, infinite conjugates on the left. Clear spherical aberration, your paraxial rays focus further out, uh, lo longer focus than your uh, edge rays. But what I want to show you is, here's the lens, it's fused silica, plano, convex, and what I've done is I've made these two a variable here. So like for instance this thickness, this 5.84, there's nothing here, so it's fixed. These are variables, so when you optimize Zmax, you're telling Zmax you are permitting this variable to change. And you could set as many variables as you have here. So I've got three variables, front radius, back radius, and a focus after a marginal ray solve. So in this case, I've, I've put a focal length constraint, EFLY or EFFL. I'm giving it a target of 50 millimeters and a weight of 1. And we've put a default merit function of RMS spot radius, uh, 11 rings by 8 arms. So the way to change, to toggle between fixed and variable is a control Z. Very awesome hotkey to remember. Control Z is in Z. Once you've set up your merit function, you can go, you can hit the OPT button or control shift O brings up the optimization dialog box and that's this right here. Having this box is going to lock out all other windows. The left has how you control turn on and off your optimizer shows you how many targets essentially how many lines in your merit function editor how many variables uh, just have one in this this sample your starting merit function now I want to go back I should show you this merit function here so each each line is going to have a target a value and a weight and it goes to this contributor so right now the focal length is a very small contributor whereas the Constraints entered by the default merit function are higher weights. You can see you have a 2%, a 4.5% here. Oh, and so these, these, all these contributors go up to a single value, your merit function. This is 1.18. So when you hit optimize, Zmax is going to try and drive your merit function, your, your, your merit down. So this is the starting merit function. This is the current merit function. Uh, there's several algorithms. Damp least squares is what you're going to want to do for sequential. There's another one for illumination. Zmax utilizes an optimization multiple uh, processors. If you have multiple processors, it usually defaults to the maximum. But if you're doing something else, you can select uh, less, opt uh, less processors. 
So once you get this dialog, if you hit automatic, this number will scroll over and it will drive it down. And when it hits a minimum, it will terminate. If you get impatient, you can hit terminate. And then to exit out of here, you just click exit. Now I want to talk about weights and optimization. Waiting is a big deal when you're optimizing. And there's five locations where you have to set weights. In your fields, you can weight your fields relative to one another. Your wavelengths, you can weight your wavelengths relative to one another. Your default merit function, how much your merit function is weighted to your other constraints. And these individual constraints, focal length, weight, overall length, and configurations. We've not discussed configurations. This is Scott in post-edit. I forgot to include something very important talking about weights. The weight, if you create a default merit function, and then you go change the weights in either the fields, the wavelengths, or the multi-configuration editors, it will not update all the weights in the default merit function. You have to go back to the default merit function and re-enter it. So what I'm saying is fields, wavelengths, and multi-configurations are not dynamically linked to the default merit function. The default merit function weights only get assigned when you hit OK on the default merit function dialog box. The closer box. these weights are to unity, the more stable your merit function is going to be. In some cases, you have to make a very large weight. If you're optimizing and your focal length is not being maintained, drive up the weight. And don't be afraid to put like a thousand, one times ten to the three as a weight. The problem is once you start increasing exponentially these weights, they can get out of control and your merit function can stall and it becomes less stable. If your merit function stalls, if the optimization stalls, you need to study your weights. Go to the merit function editor, like I showed here, and look at this last column here and look at what the top contributors are. If and it could be that that contributor is wrong or you're physically not giving it a variable to fix it. If you're trying to focus something and your only variable is a conic constant, you're not going to focus it. So look for the highest weight and there might be multiple. You might be having two constraints that are fighting one another. So you just have to study your weights. So let's go to some examples here. I'm going to use the default uh, a sample lens that comes with ZMAX. ZMAX will install in your My Documents directory a ZMAX subdirectory, and you're looking for the samples here. Samples, we're going to go to sequential, we're going to go to objectives, and here's this Cook 40 degree field of view. We're not going to look at ray intercept plots, we've not talked about that yet, although they're very in, a very important tool. You can see there's a lot of variables, and look, there's a marginal ray or marginal angle, marginal ray angle solve on this radius, we're not going to use that. We're going to remove all variables, Actually, I'm going to keep all variables for now. I'm going to get rid of this one, Control-Z. So I'm going to purposely defocus this lens. So you can see it's greatly defocused, and I'm going to do a quick focus adjust. Control-Shift-Q. I'm going to do a spot size. So it focuses this. You can see it gets back to about where you're at. I'm going to do something a little odd here. I'm going to put a curved image plane on. So now we have a curved image plane, and I'm going to defocus it. So defocused curve image plane, and I'm going to do another quick focus, control shift Q, spot size, update, and look, we're not focused on axis or at the edge, we're kind of focused in the, in the 7.7 .7 field zone. And what's happening is ZMAX is actually not setting focus just for this axial ray, but all these fields. If you don't like that, here's the field data dialog box and if you don't like that let's just go in and change these fields here so now we've got a, just a weight on axis it's going to give me an error some weights are zero just so you know and I'm going to do a control shift Q again now notice we're at 44.9 when I hit OK it goes to 42.24 and indeed we're now at focus on axis so that's the quick focus let's do a slider tools miscellaneous slider we're going to do surface six the thickness and I just want to update the layout so window one you can see this one right here if I wanted spots I do three and we're gonna go from 25 to 50 so you can see as we slide this bar back and forth you're changing focus. So you can manually eyeball focus with this method. 
Let's talk about using the merit function editor now. Merit function, or F6, pulls up this screen here. I'm going to go ahead, just for sake, let's say we're optimizing, I'm going to input a focal length at wavelength 2. And I hate these extra columns. I always get rid of them. Uh, now, right now, there's no, you may look and, well, focal length, there's no value. As you enter in parameters here, like, like axial color, it's zero. Well, you've just entered it in. You have to update this. And you can either do that by tools update, or you could just double click anywhere in this field, update. So 50 millimeter focal length, 77 micron axial color. We're going to delete that. We don't care. Now, if I just go in and say tools default merit function, and I'm not careful, I will overwrite this focal length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put default merit function, DMFS here. So now when I go to the default merit function, it knows start at line 3. Now if I didn't have that DMFS in there, if I go default merit function, it's going to start at 1, and it overwrites that. You've gotten rid of your focal length. So I'm going to click undo. I'm going to go... Um, DMFS, we're going to go to Tools, Default Merit Function, we're just going to do Gaussian Quadrature, and we're going to do a weight of 1. Now it's given me an error because some of the field weights are 0. Uh, that's right, I probably don't want to do that. So just to show you, see it's only entered operands for field 1, these lines here, OPD and X. Let's go back and fix the weights. Let's go back to 1, 1, and 1. Tools, default merit function, OK. And it's and now you can see that you've got operands in field 1, field 2, and field 3. So I'm going to hit optimize, and I'm going to be purposely stupid here. Control shift O, this is your optimizer. We're going to hit automatic. Now I'm going to auto update. Now it's gone nuts there. What's what's going on? I just wanted to focus it. It's a completely physically unrealizable lens. Well, I'm not told Zmax to control the lenses at all. So it's just going to go nuts and just stupidly drive the merit function to zero. So let's terminate this. Terminate this. This is silly. I'm going to hit F3 and go back. Okay. So now what, what happened is I've got all these variables here. I don't want all those variables. I just want to focus the silly lens. So to get rid of those, you can either come and do Control z Control z but I'm not going to do that because there's a lot there. You can go Tools, Optimization, Remove All Variables, and then I'm going to put this variable back in for focus. Now, I don't need to wait the focal length. Uh, I just put this in there as an example. So let's go ahead and hit optimize. You know what? Yeah, let's just hit optimize. You can see it's focusing. And again, it's, it's trying to balance over the field. Now, just as a, as a fun exercise, let's vary the image plane radius of curvature. I'm going to purposely give it a defocus again. Control Shift O. And it's going to optimize. And you can see. It's essentially, and now it's a slight, there's slight field curvature, 700 millimeter field curvature. So it's focused it and set the field curvature. So that's the merit function editor, and that's optimization in a nutshell. Some homework provided here using an Edmund biconvex lens with the prescription provided here. I'll put a link to my blog for the details of these homework uh, at my blog. You can reach us on the web via email, Twitter, or on iTunes. Please stop by and say hello, and thanks for tuning in.